Today's episode is brought to you by Stream by AlphaSense, an expert interview transcript library that integrates AI-generated call summaries and NLP search technology so their clients can quickly pinpoint the most critical insights. Start your free trial at www.streamrg.co backslash PMC. That's S-T-R-E-A-M-R-G dot co slash PMC. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell securities. SNN Network, SNN Inc., and the Planet Microcap Podcast and the representatives are not licensed brokers, broker dealers, market makers, investment bankers, investment advisors, analysts, or underwriters. We do not recommend any companies discussed. We may buy and sell securities in any company mentioned and may profit in the event those securities rise in value. We recommend you consult with a professional investment advisor, broker, or legal counsel before purchasing or selling any securities referenced in this podcast. Welcome to the Planet Microcap Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Kraft. Thank you all so much for the support and for tuning in. Do me a quick favor. If you like what you hear at Planet Microcap, please take two seconds and give us five stars on Spotify or Apple. This helps us with the search engines so that more folks can also discover and engage with all things Microcap. Registration is now open for our next event, the Planet Microcap Showcase, taking place in Las Vegas at the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino, formerly Bally's, on April 25 through 27, 2023. Expect three days of networking, company presentations, one-on-one meetings, in short, a lot of fun. If you follow our community and especially invest in microcap stocks, you're not going to want to miss this. Expect more announcements as we get closer on sponsors, speakers, the presenting companies. And to register and attend, please visit www.planetmicrocapshowcase.com. See you in Vegas. Now for today's show, I invited on Brent Cook, founder of Exploration Insights. The first conferences I went to in my career We're going to junior mining conferences back in 2011. I think I went to three or four. Sentiment was extremely high. Gold crossed the $1,800 an ounce threshold. And every newsletter writer and gold bug espoused that $5,000 an ounce gold was not out of the question by the end of 2012. Sounds eerily familiar, eh? In any case, uh, resources markets have had a rocky 10 plus years, some ups and downs, mostly driven by hype. For example, materials needed for EV markets, ESG issues in mining, and plenty more. And here we are in 2023, and the price of gold has stayed above 1800 an ounce to start the year. Brent is a frequent guest that I turn to when I have questions about the mining industry, especially right now, where there seems to be some real tailwinds lifting the industry which we discuss in our chat. Brent will also be sharing his thoughts live on a panel at our conference, the Planet Microcap Showcase, on April 25 through 27, 2023. So if you like what you hear today, be sure to join us in Vegas to meet him in person. Thank you again for tuning in to the Planet Microcap Podcast, and please enjoy my conversation with Brent Cook. This episode is brought to you by Stream by AlphaSense. You can find them at streamrg.co backslash PMC. That's S-T-R-E-A-M-R-G dot co backslash PMC. Stream is an expert interview transcript library that is starting to become an integral part to investors' research process. They have a number of interviews on a wide variety of companies, including TMT, consumers, industrials, real estate, and more. Stream provides over 300 expert interviews per week, and 70% of their experts are found exclusively on Stream. Stream is unlike any other transcript libraries. Stream integrates AI-generated call summaries and NLP search technology so their clients can quickly pinpoint the most critical insights. Stream's community of experts and thought leaders partner with Stream to build their professional brands and expand their industry influence. Right now, there are approximately 8,500 plus call transcripts available. For more information, please visit www.streamrg.co backslash PMC. That's S-T-R-E-A-M-R-G dot co backslash PMC. Brent, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? Yeah, great, great. Good to see you after. It's been a while. It has been a while, man. It was good. I think last time I saw you was our last time I saw you since the previous time, which was way longer, uh, was at a precious metal summit in uh, Beaver Creek this year. That was that was really fun to reconnect. 
Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, definitely. So the reason I invited you back on today, because listen, we've known each other for, I mean, I think your presentation might have been one of the first ones I've ever seen at an investor conference. Um, that was 10 plus years ago now. Mm. And, um, you know, back then also it was when, uh, what was it, or 11 years. So it was 2011 or 12 years now, geez. Um, back in 2011, 2012, you know, that was the last time the price of gold, we're just using gold as kind of like our our proxy for the entire commodity or resource industry. But at, back then, that was when gold was about 1800. Everyone thought this is it. We're going back to the gold standard. Gold is next thing, 2000 and then 5000. And then it, and then it didn't. But now here we are. We're at uh, 2023 and it's above 1900. So I wanted to start off with what about gold being above 1800 and now 1900 is different from back then when it was above 1800? Well, I think you know, there have been some fundamental differences. Probably, I mean, there's a lot, but in, in my view, what really has triggered the rise in gold price recently is the Russian um, invasion or attempted invasion of Ukraine and the US and its allies' response to that, in that they confiscated um, or froze at least. Russians, Russia's U.S. currency reserves. And when Russia saw that and other countries uh, saw that happening, it clicked in their mind that that is not a safe place to keep their money. And so they've been uh, shifting it over into gold. I mean, probably the biggest recent buyers of gold have been well, Russia, Turkey, China, Uzbekistan, uh, Qatar, and a few other you know, less, uh, I won't say a rogue, but a few other countries like that, that would be concerned about the U.S. confiscating or freezing their U.S. reserves. And China has had a policy for quite a while to increase their percent of reserves in gold to 25%. Um, so that's part of it as well. So that, to me, is the thing that really triggered it. Then you've got inflation, you've got interest rates, you've got the U.S. economy, a potential looming recession. All those things are piling up, I think, to be a legitimate positive for gold going forward for some time to come. For sure. But, the, and then, but then when we put it in the context of the rising costs of for juniors um, and development costs and, you know, getting a mine online – I mean, because, you know, those costs have gone up also significantly compared to back when, you know, it was above 1800 gold, like 2011, 2012 timeframe, you know, so are investors are, for you, when you're looking at potential projects, do you have that in the back of your mind too, when you're still seeing the, you know, like, oh, okay, we're above 1900, but you know, the cost of doing all this stuff is still pretty high, especially on low grade projects. No, for sure. I mean, you know, that's sort of what, I do or did at Exploration Insights, what Joe does now. Um, every project we look at, in the back of your mind, you've got to, you know, you look at a rock, you go on a project, you got to look, okay, where am I located? What's it cost going to be to get here to build something? What's the infrastructure? What's the jurisdiction? What's the land like? Where's the water? Where's the electricity? All those things play into it. And yeah, they, those costs have increased and it's become increasingly hard to actually permit and build a mine because of a lot of other um, issues. As you know, cost being one jurisdiction, there's a lot more environmental uh, input, if you will, um, those sorts of things. So it's much harder to find, develop, and produce gold or, or for that matter any any metal uh, copper is a big one I'm, I'm very keen on as well but those costs have gone up but on the flip side of that what that means is if you can find the right one it's going to be extremely valuable to a mining company so our junior is just basically in the game right now of like we're not even mine are you kidding me like <laughs> no 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 but the, we're we just want to get it to the point where we get taken out. I mean, is that the mindset of most juniors at this point? Uh, I don't think it is, but it should be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the worst thing, the worst thing in the world to me would be to have to build a mine after you find a deposit. Whole different mindset, 
much boring technical uh, details and such. Whereas, in my view, if you've got something that's really good as a junior exploration mining company, let's say you prove up some sort of reserve, if it's good enough, someone's going to buy it. If it's not good enough, you've got to build it, and that's going to take years of share dilution um, through financing to get there. Yeah. You and mentioned you know, this, the chart. The chart goes, your discovery looks good. I'll do it from your angle. <laughs> discovery lo looks good. Everything's great. You've got your reserve. Okay, now we've got to do the water studies, the technical studies. You know, the government steps in, and so you end up down here. And this is where you're making the big financings before it finally rises again if you're successful. <laughs> you want to avoid that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you mentioned copper is interesting to you right now. Tell me why. Well, there's this, I mean, this, this whole electrification and um, and development of the world is going to take a hell of a lot of copper. Like, I think it takes a, Tesla takes four times more copper to build than a regular automobile. And then you just extend that across the board. That's what carries electricity for the most part is copper wire, copper batteries, and not batteries, but generators and stuff. So, yeah, copper is in going to demand is set to increase considerably while production is really set to mostly decline or stay flat. And again, that's because to put a big copper mine in production is taking in the order of 10 to 20 years from discovery. Uh, your capex has gone way higher to build it. And again, you've got these same issues in that you've got, you know, the water issues. You're dealing with usually big open pits and not many countries like big open pits anymore. So it's difficult to get all that together. So what that means is, again, the copper price is going to keep continue going up, barring this recession we might end. And um, copper deposits are going to be very valuable. I think that's yeah. a great place to be. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you bring up copper. I just did an interview with a company um, on the due diligence pod called Amerigo. And a, a full disclosure, not a shareholder. Um, and it was interesting their model because they they you know they're copper mine copper producer without a copper mine right this idea of taking the tailings um, from the number one copper producer in the world and then putting it through their um, their technology or their plant their processing plant and then basically it's low grade copper and then you know funneling out copper and they have a deal with with Cadelco um, for for the, those reserves. So I'm just curious, especially with respect to copper, why isn't this type of model being done? Because one of the other, pardon me, before I get to the question, because one of the other things that Aurora said, the president and CEO, is that there's not a, it's not big, a lot of competition out there. So I'm just curious. I mean, you've been in the game for a while. Like, why isn't there more of this type of business model out there, especially with regards to copper with everything you're saying now? Well, Amerigo's in a unique situation. Whereas they've got a steady stream of copper, of waste, basically, that's got a, a small percentage of copper, and their processing costs are extremely low because all they do is take the waste, process it, and then put it back out. And it's all set and done, and you know it's, it's working fine. Generally, when you start reprocessing tailings, which is what the waste is, you're dealing with rock with a minor amount of the primary metal that they were the mining company is unable to get out and there's always a little bit of metal left in any deposit that you just can't physically get out and most people that try and go in and reprocess tailings end up losing money um one company doesn't is go gold in mexico they, they've done that and they made decent money on that. But for the most part, it's because it's just too hard to get that last little bit out. I mean, is there any, is, by the way, real quick, are you Sherald and Go Gold or America? Oh, yeah, I own Go Gold, not America. Gotcha. But I mean, is there anything patented about these processes? I mean, can anybody, if, if not, I mean, can anybody just go to the number two copper producer? I mean, just like Go Gold, but like, maybe the number three or whatever going down the list. 
go in there and say, Hey, you know, we got the financing, we'll build this, it'll take this amount of time to build, and then just give us all your waste and we'll go from there. Yeah, generally a mining company, say Kennecott, with their mm-hmm. big mine at Bingham, um, they've done everything they physically can, can to extract the last bit of metal out of their tailings. And there's really nothing left. And if so, most large operations are to the point where, you know, there's nothing left that's recoverable. So no, it's it's not gonna it's not that easy. Gotcha. So and Canicot shareholder. Uh that's Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto, yeah. Uh, actually, I own some of that too. <laughs> I pay a dividend, believe it or not. Oh, there you go. <laughs> So what in your opinion, you know, look, it, it's been a it's been a, a rough go um for the most part for junior miners in the last however many years. I mean, 2022, I don't think was necessarily that bad. Um, but I mean, what what's your general sense or sentiment right now when you're when you think about junior mining and where you're looking? I mean, I know you're going to a few events uh coming up, but you're actually gonna be speaking at our event. Um, on a panel, uh, Planet Microcap Showcase Vegas, uh, April 25 through 27. Um, so, I mean, for you, I mean, how are, how are you thinking about this current state of affairs and where we're at and how macroeconomics is affecting everything? Well, I'm not your usual newsletter pundit. I always talked about gold going to 5,000 and silver to 100. Um, as you know, I'm often, more often than not, negative on the sector. Um, because it's a tough place to make money. And we've, you know, we haven't actually performed that well, given, you know, with earnings and such. Although there's always a market for a good deposit, regardless of what the market in general is doing. Um, My feeling right now is fairly positive uh, for the, the reasons I laid out earlier in the, you know, the gold price going up. Uh, the shortage in copper, the shortage in new mines, et cetera. And I th- I think what's hurt us in the past as well is the tech, you know, the tech boom, the internet boom, all those, you know, bulk, what they were looking like turned into bubbles have busted. And people are looking around, and I think they're going to start recognizing that there's actually value right now to be found in this sector. Um, but it's not something everybody knows about. I mean, I, I'm guessing most of your audience has never invested in a junior gold mining company. I don't know. I'm just making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, I think there's a few in there that that have, but no, for the most part, you're right. Yeah. So, I, I'm trying to think. I mean, you know. Even though thing, you know, there is potentially this turn, you know, for you feeling a little bit more positive about the space. How for how should folks, like you said, that you know, my audience generally people that don't tend to invest in junior junior resource company at, at a minimum, you know, something that has you know some sort of production, maybe royalty, just some sort of cash flow, you know, for those folks, what how should they be thinking about the current environment? Maybe how to assess for twenty twenty three and and you know, ultimately make money. Well, I think, you know, the simplest way to do it would be via an ETF or a mutual fund that focuses on, you know, either the big mining companies or, you know, the gold itself, something like that. That's the easiest, simplest way. Then you just get a a basket of gold companies or copper companies and they perform in line with the underlying asset. Um, That's the easiest way. It's not the funnest way. Um, you know, you get your real leverage from the uh, junior companies. And that is the place. I mean, that's like uh, biotech, right? I mean, the idea of me going in and knowing anything about biotech and buying a biotech companies, I'm not going to know what's going on. Um, but if I was going to do that, I would rely on experts. And I think the best thing to do is to rely on experts, um, be it, you know, if you've got a brother or somebody in the industry, uh, your broker's good at it. A newsletter writer such as Joe Mazumder at Exploration Insights. Um, that way you're getting someone who's spent their whole life doing this and understands the intricacies of what grams per ton, cyanide solutions, 
you know, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, mean uh, in with regard to the potential economics of a deposit? And would you say in environments like this, everybody should be aware of the low grade crap, or is not all low grade crap created <laughs> equally? Okay, well, that's the that's sort of the one of my topics up in Vancouver uh, this coming week. Nice. Um, okay. Grades important. Yeah. Grade being like, but I can show you a half gram de- gold deposit in Nevada that makes a ton of money and a 30 gram deposit in Nevada that went broke. And it's got to do with the details of how the deposit lays, how you extract the gold from the, from the rock, um, how big it is, the structure, how deep it is, you know, all these things play into it. So you can't really say grade is king. I know people like to say that, but that's not the fact. Margin is king. <laughs> and that's what you got to look at. Nice. All right. That might be the title for our uh, for our chat here today. Margin <laughs> is king. Throw out, throw out grade. Um, but Brent, all right. So closing thoughts here. I mean, it's kind of a simple thesis, it sounds like this year. It's like, look, you know, in environments like this, rising interest rates, high inflation, you know, store value the hedge has always been gold um and then it's kind of you know a rising tide lifts all boats it seems like in some respect even though copper has its own sort of thesis on its own Mm -hmm. but i mean same thing for silver are you are you even looking at silver i mean i'm you know again i focus more on high you know high margin deposits i don't care what the metal is right a good silver deposit is fantastic um but there, there is with silver a lot more volatility because you've got a lot of um, silver bugs, whack jobs, really, that think silver is going, you know, to the moon, and this is what everyone's going to need, which, you know, whatever. But you know, a good silver deposit is just as good as a good gold deposit, for sure. Um, all right, so closing thoughts, man. If you had to make one prediction for twenty twenty three, that you would bet your the 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 your entire volleyball team on what would it be what would it be we're losers man (laughs) um i think gold is going to do reasonably well this year i think commodities in general are going to do reasonably well and i think it's a good time to be leveraging into them well Uh, well, that's, that's my you know what i'd put money into are you talking about spread the risk? I so the phys, the physical commodities will do well. But what about their uh, underlying equities? On the whole, they'll do well. Like I say, if you buy an ETF or or something like that, they should do well with the commodity. Right. Um, if you buy specific ones, you could do a lot better. But then you got to know what you're buying, right? Fair enough. All right, Brent. Well, with that, where can our audience go and find more information on you? Follow Exploration Insights, subscribe, the whole bit. Right. Uh, explorationinsights.com is the website that, for the letter that Joe writes, I used to write. He and I work together. There's lots of free information on there and videos. You can find my videos on YouTube. Um, I've got a Twitter account, uh, Brent Cook Geo. Um, and that's the way to do it. Nice. Brent, always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, look forward to seeing you in Vegas. Yeah, that'll be fun. Absolutely. See you. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not an offer or solicitation of an offer to buy or sell securities. SNN Network, SNN Inc., and the Planet Microcap Podcast and the representatives are not licensed brokers, broker dealers, market makers, investment bankers, investment advisors, analysts, or underwriters. We do not recommend any companies discussed. We may buy and sell securities in any company mentioned and may profit in the event those securities rise in value. We recommend you consult with a professional investment advisor, broker, or legal counsel before purchasing or selling any securities referenced in this podcast. Podcast.